So let's talk about and have a brief introduction to the physics of fluids. Now to understand fluids, we first need to talk about something called matter. We should all be familiar with matter and the three forms that we have. We have solids, and we have liquids, and we have gases. These are the three primary phases of matter. Now of these three, only liquids and gases are typically considered fluid. So that means that these liquids and gases, they actually adapt and change their shape based on the container that they're in. So classical physics, the stuff that we've learned so far, doesn't usually uh, work for describing fluids. We need new ways to, to quantify this uh, kind of adaptable characteristic of fluids. So one of the ways that we can do this is to first describe the physical quantity of density. Density has a wonderful equation that we use to describe. Uh, density uses the Greek letter rho, which stands for density, and that's equal to mass divided by volume. So where m is mass and v is equal to volume. And again, this is the Greek letter uh, rho, kind of looks like a curly p. That stands for density. Like all physics quantities, density has units. So the units of density are going to be equal to the units of mass, which are kilograms in the SI system, over uh, meters cubed, which are the units of volume, which is uh, typically some kind of length times width times the height. So it's a three-dimensional structure. So that's one of the characteristics we can use to describe a fluid, the density. We can also use something called a pressure. And like everything we love in physics, it has an equation. Pressure, big P, is equal to force divided by area. So again, this big P represents pressure. If you don't want to confuse with momentum or power, lots of different things to represent P's. And then we have force represented by the F, and we have area represented by the A. So this is when I'm pushing on something and it takes into account how hard I'm pushing uh, the force and the size of the area over which I'm pushing, which is the area. The units of pressure, we have SI units of force of Newtons over area, which is gonna be meters squared. And that's also equal to something we call the Pascal. And if you're in healthcare, you also are used to measuring pressures, except you measure blood pressure. And your units of blood pressure are not newtons over meters squared. Units of blood pressure are millimeters of mercury. And we'll talk about how this actually is a real pressure measurement. So get an idea, some kind of concept of pressure uh, in kind of a healthcare field. We can take a look at a person. So here we have a person, and we're going to give this person a shot. Now, if I come in and I use my finger and I push on this person's shoulder with just my finger, a very large finger, as we can tell, I apply some kind of force and I push, I'm not going to be able to break that skin because the force that I'm applying is applied over a very wide area. So we can kind of specify this area as, as kind of the whole size of my fingertip. Now, if I want to apply that same force and actually get skin to break, I have to use something smaller. If I use a needle, I'm taking that force, same force, let's say it's that same size blue force, but now instead of having this big glob that my finger's spreading out over, I'm applying that force over a really, really tiny pinpoint area. So that gives me a higher pressure because pressure is force over area. So as area is smaller, the pressure will get bigger, given the same force. So that's why a needle can actually break your skin, uh, but your fingertip can't. So that's pressure. And where we want to start going is with pressure, not just in air, we want to do pressure inside of a, an actual fluid.
we can treat air as a fluid, but we're going to be a little more explicit and go to a, a little bit more fluidic kind of um, uh, places. So pressure inside of a fluid. Uh, this is due to the adaptability of fluids to, to kind of change their shape. So if you can think about floating in a pool of water, let's kind of draw a cup. So we have a cylinder, and we're going to put water inside of this cylinder. And it's going to fill in this whole bottom of this cup. And if I want to know what the pressure is at the bottom of this cup, what's the pressure down here? The pressure is going to depend on a few different things. And I can quantify those things. The pressure inside of this fluid, P, is equal to the force divided by the area over which I'm applying this pressure. Now what's supplying the force to give me some pressure on the bottom of this um, glass of water? The force is provided, it's supplied, by the weight of all of this water that's over top of it. So we can think of the force as being the weight of the water. And the weight of the water is just equal to the water's mass times the pull that gravity is pulling it down with. So we can, we can adjust this uh, pressure equation to be equal to the force, which is m times g over the area over which I'm spreading this out. Now we can further uh, change this. We can adjust this equation a little bit and make it a little bit more useful by defining the height at which I want the pressure. So I'm going to say h is the depth, uh, how far below the water I am. So I can quantify this depth, h, and I can use this to quantify what this area is. So we, the way we typically do this, and the way we typically describe fluids, fluids are kind of poured into some kind of object. So we describe that in terms of a volume. And the volume of this cup is the surface area of the base of it. So that's how much area I'm taking up the area of this little circle, whatever that is, times the height, times the depth that I am in this water. So I can shuffle this equation around and do some algebra to see that area is equal to volume over height. And I can take this area equation and I can plug it in for this uh, area in my pressure. So then I see my pressure is equal to mass times gravity, that's the force of the water pushing down, divided by uh, the volume over the height, where that volume over height is the area. Now, I don't like fractions divided by fractions, so I can take this h and I can actually move it up top. So I have m times g times h, mass times gravity times height, all divided by the volume. And if I go back to the very first equation we used to describe fluids, I can see that the mass over volume is the density so I have a new equation that we just figured out for pressure at a certain depth inside of a fluid. The pressure at a certain depth in a fluid is the density times the gravity times the height. And that pressure, again, is supplied by the fluid that's actually pushing on you from all directions. So if you've ever floated inside of a body of water, if I'm inside of this glass, I can feel some pressure pushing down on me from this particle of water, and this particle of water, and this particle of water, all of these particles of water pushing on you. And that turns out to be very, very useful. And it's a way that we can actually increase pressure and use pr pressure for practical purposes. The way we do this, the way we quantify this, is with something called Pascal's Principle. There's an important feature of Pascal's principle that we need to discuss. So Pascal's principle says that a change in pressure in an enclosed fluid, and that's important, it has to be enclosed, is transmitted all the parts of the fluid. 
and to all parts of its container. You can see this in the book, in the textbook more accurately. It's kind of hard to draw concepts uh, for, the, for these kinds of, um, draw pictures for these kinds of concepts. So I suggest looking at the book for this. But the basic idea is Pascal's principle says that pressure in one area is equal to pressure in a second area if your fluid is enclosed. If your fluid isn't enclosed, it's gonna spill, but as long as it's enclosed, uh, Pascal's principle will apply. This principle is very useful something called hydraulics, which you should read about in your textbook, and it's actually used in blood flow, which you should also read about. Now when we're talking about pressure, there's not just one type, there's a few different types of pressure that we need to be familiar with. And the most common one is going to be something called gauge pressure. And gauge pressure is relative to the atmosphere. So if you're pumping up your tires or if you're measuring a blood pressure, the pressure that you're measuring is relative to the atmospheric pressure. Again, this is because air is actually a fluid and that fluid pushes on you. So the atmospheric fluid, uh, we don't include the pressure from the atmosphere from that fluid in the gauge pressure. We do have another kind of pressure called absolute. Absolute pressure is where we include gauge pressure and atmospheric pressure. And the real difference between these is in their zero points. So in gauge pressure, we have a zero point, our point of reference is the atmosphere, wherever we're sitting. Whereas absolute pressure, zero point of absolute pressure is literally zero actual pressure. And again, most of the pressures that you're gonna talk about, most of the pressure measurements you're gonna see are gonna be gauge pressure. The most common ones, uh, way that we measure these gauge pressures is something called manometer. This is described in your book in a nice picture. So look at your textbook for a photo of how this works and a description of how this works. In particular, take, pay close attention to how it works for blood pressure. If you read about this, you should be able to understand how blood pressure is actually measuring a pressure, even though the units are millimeters of mercury. Let's think about that a little bit. If we look at our definition of pressure as a force over an area, this seems really weird. The pressure units should be newtons per meter squared, but a blood pressure is millimeters of mercury. That makes no sense. Millimeters of mercury can't be newtons over meters squared. It's only when you start thinking about how pressure is measured inside of a fluid. And that's what we're doing with the blood pressure cuff. We're measuring pressure of a fluid. In particular, we're measuring pressure of mercury. So we go back to our equation that we derived, remember, from the force over area. Pressure in a fluid is density times gravity times height. If I look at these units, the millimeters of mercury I'm measuring, I'm actually measuring a displacement of mercury inside of my gauge. That millimeters of mercury is the height. So I'm measuring how high up millimeters of mercury go in on the planet Earth. So we have uh, the force that's provided by gravity. That's the force that I'm fighting, I'm counteracting to make my um, mercury rise up a certain uh, amount H. And then mercury it becomes important. Mercury determines uh, your fluid. Mercury is the fluid that I'm working with. So that's the density. I use the density of mercury. There's a reason for that, and you'll see this in a problem where you figure out a blood pressure cuff if you were gonna try to take a blood pressure using water. So I might recommend a specific example uh, to kind of get a handle on this kind of thing. 
I recommend example 11.7 uh, inside the OpenStax textbook. Now the last thing we want to talk about and be familiar with is going to be something called Archimedes Principle. We think of pressure kind of as a downward force pushing on things. Archimedes Principle governs the upward force, something called buoyancy. So Archimedes Principle tells us that there's a buoyant force in a fluid. equal to the weight of a fluid that an object displaces. The easiest example of this is to think about uh, taking a bath. And when you get into the bathtub, the water level rises. If you measure the amount of water level that rose, that would be your, uh, your weight. So the buoyant force, Fb, is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. So that's going to be the mass of the fluid that you displace times the gravity of uh, acceleration due to gravity on Earth. This is used a lot. This concept of buoyancy is used in rehabilitation to kind of provide support for injured muscles so that they don't further injure themselves uh, if you're trying to prescribe some kind of uh, rehab exercises to do. So that is uh, fluids kind of in a nutshell. Again, I recommend uh, taking a look at the textbook too and make sure you read that.